Yo, what's up guys, John Boogle here. Today we got the Crazed Tank In-Depth Guide, the updated version, because the old one is pretty low quality, and even though that old guide still works, many people see that video, they see true forms, they get intimidated, but they don't understand what a guide really is. So I guess I'm just gonna have to break it down even further and show for real that yes, this is possible with level 20 units to 25 units. Now the baseline for this stage is 5 meat shields or 5 stallers. Make sure you do have that. It does not matter what level they are, but make sure you have at least 5 of them. If you don't have Kubei, you can use Samba Cat, Coin Cat, whatever. But just make sure you have 5. And of course your main attacker here or your main cycle unit, which you will cycle every time it gets killed in the stage, is Crazed Bahamut. If you have Ururun Wolf, you can slot it in as well. Dragon here is another main attacker at plus 5 works just fine. Any lower, you might need to bring an extra attacker. If you have any higher, you won't need an extra attacker, but it's always safe to bring one. And in this case, we're using Castaway Cat. Of course, there are many options here. You can use figure skating cats, you can use ring girl cats as well as a replacement. But the reason we're going with castaway cat here is because the long cooldown will especially help for this CPU strategy. And vaulter cat is also a very nice replacement there. And also, of course, if you do have hacker cat, that is a must slot in unit for this stage. If you have the true form, you can completely destroy the stage very easily. Same thing applies with Sniper the Deadeye. Now, you can use attackers like Paris or even Cameraman if you do have it. But keep in mind here, if you're going with a CPU strategy, you might not want to have a fast recharge high cost attacker because that will drain all of your cash. So that is why we're using Castaway. But Paris does work as well, and that's what we used in the old guide. But once again, just to be safe, we need that longer cooldown, and Castaway does have enough DPS, it has enough health to handle the peons very well. And yes, the attacker, the second attacker here, other than Dragon, is really meant for the peons. There's a huge misconception with Craze Tank where you shouldn't bring units like Paris that get outranged when... If you just bring them and only use them for the peons, it is way more efficient for the stage. And if you have units like Ring Girl, Castaway Cat, or Vaulter Cat, then you can use a CPU strategy even with those three attackers there. Now for power-ups, I highly recommend Sniper Cat power-up. Everything else is optional. Of course, if you're using a CPU strategy, you'll of course be bringing CPU. Speed up is nice paired with that. Now in the beginning, of course, what you want to do, is as always get your cash maxed out. Now the main reason many people struggle in this level is because they don't build a good start. If you hit the base way too early you're gonna be unprepared and you're just gonna get pushed back very far. What you really want to do is lure out the peon waves and get that cash at the absolute max so you have the most preparation for the rest of the level going forward. And a key thing to that is setting up the enemy cycles for Crazed Bahamut. And people don't realize how important this is but it is very crucial to keeping your Bahamut alive later in the stage because you want to cycle your Bahamut on the correct peons to wipe them out very quickly and efficiently so Crazed Tank doesn't move forward and potentially kill Bahamut or your dragon stack. So the peons come in cycles spread apart by 30 to 40 seconds. Of course the Gories being the first of the cycle, then the Albros is next in the cycle, and lastly to finish the cycle it is the douches for the final batch of enemies. And that just repeats on and on until you beat the stage. Now if you set up your Craze Bahamut for the correct cycle, you won't have to keep track too much because every time Craze Bahamut is on recharge and it comes back, it will be almost smack dot right on the enemy cycle or very near it. So you won't have to worry too much about keeping enemy cycles in your head if you are worried about that or are bad at that type of thing. Anyways, once you hit the base, of course, this is the most risky part because if you do hit the cat limit when you hit the base, most of your meat shields or stallers won't be able to get up in time and that'll cause Crazy Tank to move forward and potentially Bahamut will die. But that's fine because all you needed to do was set up the cycle. Now we have the cycle in check. This is where our 
second attacker comes in clutch here and Castaway is going to deal very well with the peons and wipe them out with no issue without letting Craze Tank push forward too much. And look at that, we got Craze Bahamut in cycle once again, ready for the next peon wave. Now Craze Bahamut isn't only used to cycle on the peons of course, it is used to cycle damage on Craze Tank because most of your damage done to Craze Tank is either going to be from your Dragon Stack or Craze Bahamut cycles itself. So yes, Craze Bahamut is eventually going to die, but by the time Craze Bahamut is close to dying or will die, if everything goes well, you'll have another one probably ready to send out. And if you do, do not, I repeat, do not have two Craze Bahamuts on the field at the same time because it is very risky. You should always want to cycle them. By not having both of them on at the field at the same time means if Bahamut does happen to die very early, you can send out your other Craze Bahamut because it is on recharge and you'll be safe. But if you have both of them on the field at the same time and Craze Tank decides to just one-shot both of them, then you're in a pretty tricky situation where if you don't have your attackers on field, the peons will push very hard forward and Craze Tank will move forward and potentially even hit the base. So same thing applies with Ubers or any other legends you're using like Urudun Wolf. Make sure you have one on the field at a time. This level is the cycle game. It is very difficult to stack against Craze Tank because of the range, the DPS and just the sheer damage it does. One shotting your whole stack just like that. So it is very difficult to stack against Craze Tank. But other than that, once you do get a really good start, and once again, by that I mean making sure your wallet is max before you even hit the base, making sure your cash is max, making sure you set the right peon cycle if you can. If you got that start, then you're pretty much almost guaranteed to win the stage if you have the correct levels. Once again, Level 20 to 25 is the minimum here. 20 Bahamut works just fine. Anything lower is going to be very risky unless you're using the help of even more attackers. But keep in mind, cash will become an issue if you do bring too much. Now most of Craze Tank's difficulty does stem from how long the stage is and how much of an endurance battle it is. But as long as you keep your cycles in check, of course with CPU it is kind of difficult to do that because you would want to just... CPU the rest of the stage, which is very possible as you can see here, and the reason it is possible like that is because of course our second main attacker, Castaway, can clear the peons if Bahamut decides to aim at the snakes instead for some reason. But without CPU, you want to of course go with maximum efficiency and save for the enemy cycles, or save for Craze Tank, just to get that nice cycle chip damage, because yes, Craze Tank has millions of health here, so it is going to take a while, even with cycling Craze Bahamut over and over again. As long as you do have that second main attacker, whether it be Castaway, Paris, Ring Girl, Pole Vaulter, Hacker, Drama Cats, whatever it is, that attacker will be crucial to making this level much easier, so keep that in mind. It is possible with just Dragon alone. But it is very risky. Craze Tank pushes up very, very hard when you only have a single target attacker. You can see at some points in this run, we're able to stack up two to three Bahamuts very easily due to how much we are relying on that castaway to just wipe out all the peon waves if Bahamut does happen to miss them. So just because that attacker does get outranged by Craze Tank doesn't mean it's not useful. It is very, very helpful so keep it in mind. And if you have units like Hacker Cat, Cyberpunk, or Sniper the Recruit, or Sniper the Deadeye, you won't really have to worry about enemy cycles at all. Because units like that, or units with extremely long range like the Lugas and stuff, they will just stack up and handle the peons at a very safe distance, so you won't have to worry about it at all. Also, this run perfectly displays how without a second main attacker, look how far Craze Tank pushed up at just the beginning of the level. It's almost at the base here and we're able to recover with Bahamut in cycle there. 
But yeah, it just goes to show how important that second attacker is. But that's pretty much it for the Crazed Tank Redux Guide. Of course, if you have Ubers here, pretty much any Uber that has the same range as Bahamut works just fine. As long as it outranges Crazed Tank, has a decent amount of DPS, it works just fine for the stage. If Bahamut works, most Ubers will work here as well. The Lugas are especially nice for the stage, even though they do get demolished if the peons come in range. They can sit at a safe distance and pretty much destroy the stage. Lots of other LD units like Afro and stuff like that work as well. But yeah, drop a like if this guide helped you out. Of course, subscribe if you're new, join the hashtag Boogle Gang, go join the Discord, link is in the description down below. It's been John Boogle and see ya!